So, in JavaScript now, if you write sort of S, S is a new web socket, and you say S on message is, well, you open it, you say S on message is on message, and then on message is just a function of some data, X, and it just does eval of X. So this is the exact equivalent of this Erlang program. Okay, so I've got a JavaScript program running in a web page that just waits for some JavaScript, evaluates it, and then just waits for some more, evaluates it, waits for more. So now I only need to write one web page, because that web page is universal, it can do everything. And that's a great relief, because I've written loads of web pages, and they're a pain in the butt. So now we've got one web page, and we've got one Erlang server, so it's just a matter of connecting them together. And this leads to the following architecture. Uh, so we've got an Erlang process, and it sends some Erlang to a black box. Here's black box. Erlang comes in, and out comes JavaScript. It's all magic. And the JavaScript goes to the browser, and the browser says on message, and it evals it, and it does it. That's all. Very beautiful. Very pretty. Uh, you've got to do the magic, of course. So I wrote the magic. But only for a little subtitle. I thought I would show you because it's so much fun. And this is where things go wrong because you're not supposed to show demos that you wrote on the train and wrote last week. Oh, why did it do that? Go away. Don't do that. Right, so we need a shell. And we type make in our little shell. There we go. And Chromium pops up here, and this is actually the little code example I'm going to run. So, well, several code examples, actually. So this is a little demo. This is an Erlang program, remember. So the Erlang program says, when you're started, um, you all know JavaScript and all this stuff, don't you? You know, it has JavaScript. It's DOM. So, when Erlang is started, when, it's, when, when the browser starts this thing, it just sends a message to the browser, which is eval, and that's what you're going to, that's some JavaScript you're going to evaluate, and it says document body inner HTML is blank, so the paper goes blank, and it says document body style background is some sort of colour, and then it will say hello world, and then it'll just wait for an event to come back. So if you run that, uh, you need to launch it. So here's my universal web page. My universal web page got two lines of code in, and it says uh, load generic, which is my generic web page, and then it's got a link on it which says connect me to the web server called demo1. That's in a module called demo1, and when we run it, uh, oops, sorry, click. There you go. So what it's done is it's just sent three lines of JavaScript, clear the page, set the colour, and put some text up. Fun. So what more can we do? Oh, well, we do? A lot more, actually. So remember, now this is a JavaScript page that's not doing anything. Right. We want it to do something. So here's some more demos. So here's, um, here's another one. Oh, demo two. Send a few commands from the browser to it. Oops, here we go. Uh, yeah. So that one just sends it a command to make a button. So you've got your browser, say, send button. Not button. Okay, got button. Uh, of course, when you click it, nothing happens uh, because, well, I've just sent it a button. I haven't told the button to do anything. Um, and the next example, oops, go. Click. Oh, sorry, I've got to refresh it. And the next one says, well, let me actually send. Actually, we should see the code for this. Oh, in fact, we shouldn't see the code. Uh, ah, that sends a button. But I've also sent it some code to tell you what to do when you send it a button. And so if you click it, uh, what? There's another button. So that's a button. So I'm just firing <laughs> buttons at the thing. <laughs> and I've, I've got a couple more here. Uh, oh, this uh, this this loads a graphic type called Raphael, which is a, an interface for scalable vector graphics. And uh, and then having loaded it, it just sends. It as a command to make a, a, a draggable blob and put my image on there and make a... So, I mean, this, this is a sort of draggable thing and, uh, and this is a clickable thing. And, and, and so, 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 
fun. And then I made a little attempt, this was what I was doing on the train, to make a dynamic GUI, where I create a GUI as a first class object, send in a message, create the GUI and run it. And so I was just looking at the things you need to do that. So here we are. This is um, uh, this is just showing that I can sort of do the right things. Um, if, if you imagine a chat widget, what's a chat widget got in it? It's got an entry which you can type into and then it goes out. It's got messages that come in asynchronously which you display and it's got buttons that you can click. So this actually has got all of these things. It's got uh, asynchronous messages which I'm pushing to it from the uh, client. And I'm actually pushing graphics objects as well. Why, why just send text to somebody? I can send graphics. To so I'm just sending a few rectangles. Um, here they are. In fact, if you look at the code, uh, where's the code here? Um, Emacs. Uh, Emacs. If you look at that code, uh, it is. Remember I said there should be a black box and you send it a message and you send it airline in and JavaScript will come out? Well, here's the black box. Here's the, here's the stuff that goes into the black box. If I'm sending the black box messages like clear window, background orange, add a button, click me, which will send a zap it message back to me when you click it. Uh, add a div called A, add a canvas called C, add a random rectangle to C. So that's what goes into the black box. And the black box itself... It's just a little bit of code here. Here it says, if you, if you send me an add canvas thing, or add, if you send me an add random rectangle, it will just do this sort of stuff. So this is, uh, this is a bit of JavaScript. So this is a function which, when you evaluate it, produces JavaScript, sends it down the line, and the browser evaluates it. Isn't that nice? Well, I think it's nice. I think it's beautiful. Back. Uh, that, was, that was all I wanted. Uh, uh, not so much. Here. Oh, and at the bottom of it, this is um. If you look up Joe Armstrong or send me a mail or something, or look on the airline mailing list, or go to GitHub and type Joe or something, you'll find this. And there's a long list of things, a few suggestions for improvements and, and things. You know, so sort of fork me on GitHub and implement some of these and then post it to me and I'll stick it in there and, and, and we'll have a great fun. Right. So let's take on the way here again. We want to sort of componentize what's in your JavaScript. I want to be able to send a complete GUI to somebody, bang, you know, the little GUI just appear. Um, then the next thing to do is, which somebody I think has already done, is to remove the browser Chrome. You know, this stuff up here, all the tabs and the junk around it's called Chrome. And if you do a Google Plugin, a Google Chrome plugin. It's actually quite easy to remove the Chrome, just make a bare window, bash it some XUL which you generate on the fly, and then you've got little, you could just send widgets to people. Hey, that'd be quite fun, actually. Right. Have a little break, maybe? Well, that's the first hour, you know, and then all the people who thought that was terribly boring can bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> Another five minute break. <laughs>